So this week on The World According to Mike Graham, we're going to do a deep dive into Nigel Farage, but not into his history, not into his politics, into his appearance in the jungle. And who better uh, than to talk to us about Nigel Farage uh, is his old friend and compadre um, and indeed fellow member of the Reform Party, Mr Ben Habib. Ben, a very good uh, evening to you. Good evening, Mike. Nigel went into the jungle, I think, with very few expectations. I think he came out of it uh, with, a, with a sort of um, enhanced reputation. Uh, how do you think he did? What really impressed me about Nigel was his stoicism, his ability to put himself in incredibly uncomfortable positions, facing snakes, being covered in cockroaches and all sorts of other creepy crawlies, and not bat an eyelid. He absolutely went through it with the kind of stiff upper lip that was traditionally, you know, we were renowned for in the United Kingdom. And most people have swapped their stiff upper lip for a quivering lower one. But <laughs> Nigel is absolutely firm. And he still represents all those fantastic traditional British values, including, you know, as I mentioned, the stiff upper lip. So I was uplifted by it. And um, I thought he did brilliantly, didn't he? I mean, the programme itself, I think, is quite boring watching yeah. people sitting around in the jungle. But the tasks that they have to do, I thought he discharged himself uh, Immaculately. Yeah. Well, I mean, I enjoy the programme by not watching it, funnily enough. And, uh, in fact, the best <laughs> yeah. thing about it is the people that get all worked up when someone like Nigel Farage goes in. Let's have a look at how uh, he handled Nella Rose, uh, who tried to have an argument with him about immigration. Uh, apparently, you. you're anti-immigrants. Who told you that? Oh, the who internet. Told... The oh, well, internet. there we are, then. It must be true. It must be true. It must be. <laughs> it must be true. OK, but then why don't black people like you? You'd be amazed they do. Well, You'd be amazed. Nigel! If, if you came with me, Nigel! if you came with me, if you, huh? came, if you came with me through South London, you'd be astonished. Oh, wow, what were you doing in South London, Nigel? Well, I'm there every day. Yeah, what were you doing in South London, Nigel? <laughs> like, it's a no-go zone for somebody who actually lives in northern Kent uh, and he has to come through it every day. I mean, it's quite remarkable, Ben, isn't it, the way people see Nigel Farage <laughs> through some kind of weird looking glass. But we're not, no one's against immigration. What we're against is unbridled, rampant immigration at the pace at which it's um, being foisted on the United Kingdom and all the economic, cultural and social damage it's doing. That's what we're against. It's not a matter of being racist or xenophobic. It's a matter of making sure that the country can cope with the number of people who are coming into it and so that we can integrate and we don't undermine our own um, labour force and, yeah. you know, over power our public services and so on. And that seems to be lost in the debate. The minute you say you want to control immigration, you become a xenophobic, racist, fascist, right-wing lunatic, even if you happen to be half Pakistani as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's bonkers, isn't it? And also, I get this quite a lot, where people go, you've got children? How possibly could they put up with that? Uh, they must be so ashamed of you. Here he is. Here's Nigel with his daughter, Isabel, uh, who appears to be, to all intents and purposes, a pretty normal woman. It's been so refreshing to just see you as you for once. Mm. Oh, everyone at home is amazed, like, shocked, but in the best way. For a second there, I thought Nigel was tearful. Yeah. I've never seen that with Nigel before. Mm. He was moved by his daughter. I, I was talking about his stoicism, and, you know, that's how I see Nigel, absolutely rock solid. I've seen him looking but he was tearful moved once in a daughter. restaurant when they said they'd run out of Cote de Rhone. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> But anyway, listen, let me introduce uh, Lizzie Cundy and Russell Quirk, who are both here with us tonight, uh, mm. because uh, the world, according to Mike Graham, has many faceted uh, bits of it. Um, Lizzie, what did you make of it as a, as a show compared to some of the other ones? Well, I actually love the show, yeah. um, and I, I didn't miss one of these with Nigel in, particularly. He's been a good friend of mine for the last 20 years. Right. And I knew he wanted to try and appeal to a younger audience yeah. and people to understand him properly, rather than as as we saw Nella do, you know, right. saying like he was some sort of racist. Well, she, she ended up coming out of it looking much worse than he did. Because well, yeah. everybody thought, well, one, she clearly doesn't know what she's talking about, and two, she's pretty rude, and she was evicted straight away, Russell, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, look, I think it was PR genius yeah. on the part of Nigel Farage and his team. Um, you know, I, th I suspect ITV thought he was going to come out of it looking right. too right-wing and a yeah. bit xenophobic. He's come out of it, actually, you're right, Lizzie, in terms of all demographics now, being understood, uh, being listened to, yeah. uh, where he's articulated himself as actually the man that probably says and thinks the same way that most of us in the yeah. country yeah. are thinking right now. Right. Um, if he did want to stand 
as an MP uh, for the Conservative Party. I mean, Ben, funny enough, talks about snakes and cockroaches. He'd be right at home in Parliament, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't he? Well, he, he would. Um, <laughs> but, but never a better time than to do it now. I mean, honestly, yeah. if there's ever to be a saviour for the Conservative Party, and Ben, sorry, I know you're part of a different party, but I, I have to say this on, um, on behalf of the nation. If Nigel Farage was, was to become an MP for the Conservative Party and leader of the party and Prime Minister, potentially, in the next election, the Conservatives would absolutely wipe the floor with Keir Starmer. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You saw it in 2019. The nation, Boris sold himself as a bit of a Nigel Farage. That's what Boris did in 2019. But if they got the real thing, my goodness, the majority would be massive. But you and they could get rid of all those left-leaning, one-nation, useless bunch of Tories on the left. The Lib Dems, yeah, you mean? the Lib Dems, yeah. which, you the know, Lib Conservatives Dems, exactly. are now the Liberal Democrats. But at the uh, conference party, did you see the welcome... With less interesting <laughs> sex lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Nigel got a huge welcome at the yeah. Conservative... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, well, he's dancing, dancing conference party. party. But you know why? Was... Because he's a Conservative. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and well, he's a true Tory. I mean, there are yeah. some people who still are, but not many of them are in the party that's called the Conservative Party, unfortunately. True enough. Um, true ben, true. Uh, you're the deputy leader of reform. I mean, there's a lot of talk about this at the moment. There's a lot of talk about some kind of reformed Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage pact going on. But, I mean, would you merge with the Conservatives? Would you create a new party? What would you do? There would be no deal with the Conservatives Ooh. because it's fundamentally broken political party. They're completely riven with this one-nation lot, not mm. just in the Parliamentary Party, but at CCHQ uh, and all their... Or campaign organisers and so on. It's deep, deep, deeply rooted. And I know that the uh, Conservative Democratic Organisation, which was something started by David Campbell Bannerman and Lord Cradas, has tried to root it out. But it's a devil's own job. Mm. And so we wouldn't wish to sully our pure uh, sort of British national interest based policy agenda by getting into bed with Tories who work, in our view, consistently against the national interest. We just wouldn't do it. And I'm afraid, as much as Boris is a fantastic speaker, a fantastic connector with the people, first class, top politician, arguably one of the best politicians since Maggie Thatcher, um, he isn't of our ilk. You know, Boris is a Sinophile, he's a Europhile, he's a globalist. He's not really a Brexiteer. He doesn't believe in the things we believe in. So I see no uh, alliance between Boris and Nigel, and I see no coming together between the Conservative Party and Reform UK. I just can't see it. OK. Well, I mean, you'll have to find a dance partner elsewhere then, won't we? We'll have a look at Nigel Farage doing I'm Too Sexy. <laughs> have a look. I'm too sexy for my love. Too sexy for my love. Love's going to leave me. Sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. Life is soul, life is soul the party. He's a, good, he's a good sport, no, he is. You know. He is great he is. fun. And I'm so glad that everyone now can see what a great chap he is. Yeah. And he, it, he it, takes the mickey out of himself. Yeah, it's, a, well. it's a masterclass in popularity. Yeah. It really is a masterclass. It is. You know, on TikTok, they now call him the goat, apparently. Do he's they? blown up. Yeah. Greatest of all time. The greatest of yeah. all time. Well, I mean, they'll, they'll, find, they'll find it hard to replace him in next year's uh, Armistice Level. Get well, me yeah. out of it. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Maybe it will Ben Habib next year. Ben, thank you very much indeed uh, for giving us the time. Uh, Russell and you have to uh, Lizzie, be a celebrity gonna stay... to be invited on. Yeah, exactly right. R Russell and Lizzie, you're going to stay with me because we're going to do uh, Prime Minister for the week coming up. But that was our deep dive uh, into the jungle and Nigel Farage. And that's the end of part one of The World According to Mike Graham. Coming up next, after the break, we're going to be doing Prime Minister for the week. Welcome back to The World According to Mike Graham. We're going to be coming up with the Apology of the Week very shortly. But first, it's Prime Minister for the Week.
And now it's time to meet our panellists for this week's Prime Minister for the Week. And I'm delighted for the first time to say Lizzie Cundy has joined us. Lizzie, welcome Thank to the world you. according to Mike Graham. Russell Quirk, uh, also for the first time on this show. Um, but I'm very excited about having you two together. You're very well dressed. I think you're the most well dressed uh, pair it's Christmas. of. of uh, well, it is Christmas, Thank and you. you are blue and red, uh, very well coordinated. Um, so, since you're so well dressed, I'm really looking forward to your very, very big ideas. Lizzie, what's your first uh, well, idea? Well, I am going to say ban Gary Lineker from Twitter. That's it. She's won. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, what yeah. a great idea. There'll be a lot of people. Otherwise known <laughs> as X. Yes. I have had enough of Gary Lineker yes. full stop. Right. Not only, not because he's paid huge amounts of money on taxpayers' money, 1.3 million, yeah. but the fact is he Nearly should... Nearly 700,000 per year, isn't it? He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but, I mean, he, it's now getting too much. It is. He, he, he tweets and tweets politically. He's not supposed to. He's supposed to be impartial. Yeah. They, they've they let him off the hook the first mm. time round when he was... And uh, that was their mistake, because look what's happened now. Exactly. Well, when he called the government Nazis. Well, he was calling, yeah. you know, really nasty stuff actually about Suella the yeah. uh, former Home Secretary yeah. and and now they re sort of wrote the guidelines for Gary mm. now yet again he's come back with some really horrible stuff mm. on Grant stats and yeah. what I'm hearing in my ear that allegedly Gary has someone that's helping him Alistair Campbell well, it is Alistair Campbell who There's is no writing he's literally got his hand up his back yeah. like, a, like a puppeteer yeah. so um, Gary's not only I'm sorry to say making a fool of the BBC yeah. he's he making is. a fool of us that are he's paying doing it on purpose. the BBC he must he must it on well he can only either want to be uh, let out of his contract or they've already told him we're not going to renew it and he's trying to save face I think by making out they're going to fire well, him for I, his politics yeah. I actually think right? he wants to go out in glory as, as yeah. some lefty socialist yeah. As well, some hero, well, he's, as worked some out, hero. he's worked out, like many people have, that there's a lot of money in being a left-wing champagne socialist because you will get listened to by a lot more people um, than if you're a horrible right-wing exactly. bigoted nasty But also, like most like on the Trump. left, he will want to be a victim. Right. And if he gets fired and can become oh. a martyr, yeah. he becomes a victim. And then Saint and he's going to be yeah. hero worship. Yes. And that's the thing. And the thing what I feel sorry for is actually Tim Davy, who needs to get a backbone. Yeah. He's like a jellyfish. Yeah. He looked actually quite, as you see him being questioned about yeah, yeah. Gary, he looks actually like scared and very pale yeah, but and if ill. if you're running the BBC now, you'd be like, get this guy out. Yeah. Just get rid of him. But he's got to get it's strong. Is it... it Gary is making the BBC a laughing yeah. stock and also he's taking the mickey out of us who pay for the BBC. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, and I've and now had enough. His nose at it. And I say if I were Prime Minister, Gary, right. you'd be banned well, from being know, on social media. I can media. help you out there because he's blocked me, so I never see any of his tweets anyway. Oh, he's so, blocked um, you. So I mean, that's, that's why I'm doing it as well. Yeah, it's but an honour. I, I have to say, I, I, I'm, 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 I know a lot of people that are getting very angry about yes. it. And yeah, a lot of people mass. aren't wanting to pay no. the BBC licence anymore. Right. And why are the BBC anyway paying that stupid amount of money mm. for his wage? Well, and actually, you know, when he and was... they should be investing in yeah. an up-and-coming okay. talent. When right. he was suspended, it made no difference to the viewer things no. either, did it? No, they went up, actually. But yeah, that's yeah, yeah. another story. Okay. What's your first that's one? That's a tough act to you follow. You want to ban something as well? I do want to ban something. I want to ban people on benefits from smoking. Okay. What? Spending their money on <laughs> cigarettes <laughs> and scratch cards. Surely they haven't got enough money to buy cigarettes. No, but the point is they have. You're much more likely to be a smoker if you're on Benefits, right. so the stats say. Right. So, on the basis that it costs the British taxpayer now about three hundred billion pounds a year yeah. in benefits, right. and that's doubled in the last five or six years. How on earth can it be right that people that are taking benefits to live and they're on the bare minimum, so they're supposed to be using yeah. the benefits for food and heating and so right. on, go out and start spending that money on things like tattoos? Scratch cards yeah. and smoking is wrong. It's our money. Yeah. Well, this it's is the thing. our money. They used to have a system in America where they gave people food stamps. Coupons. Yes. So you could only yeah. actually use them to buy food. And do you know the incentive? But of course, the money. lefties won't have this. The lefties will go, oh, that's horrible. Well, they'll, they'll, you I, can't I can, tell people what to do with their money. Right. Yeah. I can imagine well, the comments now. Right. I can imagine the comments now. They're going to say, because they're stressed, they're smoking more because they're, they're, they're not working. But, but you know the answer? If you don't want to not be able to smoke and you're on benefits, don't be on benefits. Because at the moment, there's a million job vacancies, yeah. but 300,000 people are still taking out-of-work benefits. Yeah. It's well, outrageous. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot on benefits, but some people do need to be some on benefits, do. but not all. But not 22 but million people. They don't need people. to smoke, though. Just no, they don't no. need to smoke. No, I mean, he's not saying ban <laughs> benefits. He's only saying ban smoking. Ban smoking and right. scratch cards and yeah. tattoos. Yeah. And tattoos. Also, and tattoos. I mean, well, but, 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 this you know, thing. We're now in this ridiculous state of affairs where the Prime Minister of this country actually got up in Parliament and said that he was going to ban smoking 
one year after another year. So that yeah. by the time, you know, I don't know if I get to 150, I'll have to get some young 75 year old uh, out of, out of uh, bed to go and buy me some cigarettes or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, but he, don't, he would never say, and we're going to stop people on benefits from smoking, no. but he wants to stop everybody else from smoking. Yeah. Yes, but it's very hard to smoke now anyway. If you're outside, yeah. people don't want you smoking in restaurants. You, you know, even you if you're dope, outside. Though. Everywhere you go, there's people <laughs> smoking dope. You can't but, smoke but that tobacco. Policy, that came out of New Zealand, but even New Zealand is a very they've, authoritarian they've country. They've, they rolled back. But they've stopped it. They've not done it anymore. No well, it's a way right. to get people back into work. That is what's so important exactly. because it's a yeah. focus and good for your mental health. Well, maybe you can get them smoke. working for the tobacco companies just testing the cigarette. Anyway, or, no, or even the news agents. Um, yeah. Lizzie, your second one. Well, yeah, I'm, I am a bit uh, concerned that we have got the biggest tax ever You're since the, the Second concerned. World War. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying, know. let's lower taxes. Quite right. Look, well I... Uh, you know, Liz Trust, she did it all the wrong way. Yeah. But, you know, the principles were right. Yeah. And the, what's happening now, many people I know that have got, a, a, you know, amazing wealth mm. are leaving this country yeah. because they're being taxed in every possible yeah. way. Yeah. And it is, you know, if we don't have wealthy people here, we're not going to have, you know... Well, what happened in the 70s. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the brain drain. Well, remember well, Rod Stewart. It. Rod Stewart told yeah. the story of when he got on a plane um, one day, he was at Heathrow Airport, got on a plane, they were flying to um, Barbados or somewhere, and he said uh, he got on, he was in 3E or something like that. Um, Eric Clapton was in 1A, and uh, Keith Richard was in 2B. <laughs> and he said, yeah. we're all leaving the country. Yes, yeah. they put 90%, 90 tax, tax on rock stars. Yeah, right? well, if I tell you this, the top 1% earners pay almost a third of the UK income exactly tax. Exactly right. Yep. So if we're driving them all out, mm. because the tax is so huge here, what gonna, is going to happen to this It's never going to happen under Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt, because they're closet socialists. Yeah. Well, they are. They're the Liberal Democrats. And, and I'm sorry, Rishi is like a jellyfish, you yes. know, in a Prada and suit. And also, to go back to your point about people on benefits, you know, the reason that people don't work sometimes is because it's not worth their while. Yeah. Because the tax that they much. would pay yeah. would mean they'd be worse off by working. So if they reduce the tax, a lot of people have said, don't stop taxing people till you get to 20,000. Let them have more of their own money. Because that's what they do in America. And that's what is much better for the, for the economy. Well, Mike, I was just going to say that, that. Don't tax too long. The 20k bracket. Yeah. And then those people that are on the 12 and a half won't be using the universal credits and other things. Yeah. But we've really got to get people back to yeah. work. And also yes. reduce and corporation I, tax back to where it was, I, abolish inheritance tax and abolish stamp duty. And also, I, you know, I blame Tony Blair for this, this education, 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 where he got everyone to go to university, had this massive debt. Mm. No, get people back to work, back on apprentices, you know, learning their craft. Yeah. You know, I always need a plumber. Yeah. And, you know, can't find one. Can't find one. No. Exactly. Exactly. It's a good idea. Russell, what's your next one? Uh, my next one is um, <laughs> picture the scene. I'm very right wing these. I'm very oh, these sorry. Oh, no, no, don't apologise. I'm getting worse. No, no, it's good. As I'm getting older, we're supposed to get more Tories. You're as you get banning older. people, locking them up. Oh, good. Oh, so just, you're, just, you're, you can't get a tattoo. <laughs> with, uh, no, no, with no, you. Yeah. Um, so just quickly picture the scene: yeah. M25, A12, A127, wherever you like. Uh, lane four, six o'clock in the morning. There is always someone sitting there yeah. in their Mondeo or their right. BMW 3 Series at 71 miles an hour in lane four. Yes. Uh, it's not the fast lane, by the way. Lane four. Yeah. And no matter what happens, you come up behind them. There's nothing in lane three. There's nothing in lane two. Nothing even in lane one. They don't. They move. sit there. Yeah in lane four and will not move. Yeah. They are not the police. They are not there to regulate my speed. No. They need to get you out of the way. think that's what they think they're doing? I think they do. Or they're just incompetent right. and they can't drive. And bear yeah. in mind, the driving test still doesn't take... There's a lot of people There's it? a lot of people who can't drive so, now. So I think there's a solution. And the solution is that those people that are caught lane hogging should be immediately imprisoned. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Immediately imprisoned. Oh, yes. wait, take are the you... car as well. God. And take the car. Take yeah, the and car. a massive fine. Right. Russell, I think yeah. you're one of those drivers that are really up your bottom, you know, when you're yeah. driving. And nowadays, you can't go, you know... Past 20 they, miles an hour, especially Lizzie, if they you know, moved in out the way, I wouldn't be up there, bum, would I? No. <laughs> oh, God, well, you are harsh. You say. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> but harsh. the trouble is, of course, you'd have to find some police to catch them. That is and true. And then take them somewhere and lock them up. But the police, the police are not very but good. But the police at are very, very good at soft targets, and this is a nice soft oh, target. And they don't mind thing. taking a picture of you yeah. and, and sending a fine to your house. Mm. Uh, or maybe come around later after you've committed the crime. <laughs> well, that's but they it. won't actually want to apprehend anybody in the process of doing anything bad. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know. exactly. If you're giving someone anxiety, you'll get arrested. But um, yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure them. about that. Well, I wonder if there's hard. a way of neutralising the car in some way. You know, like you know how you used to get those radar blockers? Or like a remote those control. Were apparently illegal. Yes. Mate of mine in Scotland yeah. had one. Um, and uh, you have to be a bit careful. But you, go, you used to go, watch this, because there, there was a police van always <laughs> on, the, on this bridge over the M9. 
Um, and they would have a guy with a, with a camera sticking out the door, and he would just put his jammer on. <laughs> and, and, they, and he'd do, and he had a Cadillac Escalade, and he'd do about 130 under the thing, and the guy's going, why is, why is that showing up? I didn't understand <laughs> yeah, it. That might be an alternative. But then they made them illegal, properly. Yeah, really? Might be an alternative to, to short all the electrics on the car yeah. or the lane hogger. That would do. Yeah, well, I did actually get pulled over the other day by the police did driving. You? Yes. And I, you, I'd just gone over... 20 miles an hour. I got That's exactly where the Archbishop where of Wales? Wokery was. Wales? That is ridiculous. I know, I've been done. Absolute cobblers. Right, what's your final one? Well, I'm She's going good to... Now. Look at this. I mean, this is... This is this could be... The... Right, no, listen. No, no. I've got no chance. No, no. I am stripping yes. Harry Stop. and Meghan yeah, yeah, of their like titles. <laughs> no titles. Right. No titles. Right. I, I would was... go for... I'd strip him of his citizenship. Yeah. You're not British well, actually, anymore, mate. I want, it, I want him done for treason. Yeah. Because what he's done to his father... And they both have light. Yes. And now it's, you know, I said truth always rises she to the top. She used to be your friend, didn't she? She was. I, I met, yeah, she was my friend. I yeah. helped her actually get to meet Harry. So yeah. I have a lot to answer for. did she for. say to you? Did I hear that she said to you she wanted to meet a rich man when she first no, came to Britain? No, British boyfriend she wanted. But did she not say rich? Uh, I've still got the text I'll show you after. <laughs> but, uh, look, they are like Duke and Duke and Duchess of yeah. um, the Old Bailey now. I mean, they've got five cases right. that are already still going They're single on. single-handedly keeping the legal profession, you know, yeah. afloat. Lawyers are rubbing If you're hands. not at the COVID inquiry, you're working for Harry. Well, that's it. And, <laughs> no. and Hollywood have actually even proclaimed now that they are the biggest, biggest time losers. losers. Yeah. Yeah. So their popularity, not just here, but across the pond, is really in the toilet. Yeah. And I'm afraid they're embarrassment. Yeah, they are. And, you know, you've got South Park and, and cartoons taking the mickey out of them. And I just feel so sorry for mm. King Charles and for Catherine yeah. that have been... You know, allegedly racist when they have not. Absolute and rubbish. Yeah. It's, they've told too many lies, and time for them to go get rid of their titles. Good idea. Um, you might as well go for the last one, but I'm well, afraid one. it's not looking it's good. It's not good. looking great, is it? So, no. um, yeah, from a position of abject weakness, thanks, Lizzie, um, <laughs> this is my only serious one. Really, okay. Uh, which is that. We don't we... execute anybody. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So yeah. now we're getting into election time. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start hearing lots and lots of pledges and promises Lies. from politicians. That's it. Lies. That's exactly my point. Yeah. Um, and they're going to start telling us what they're going to do on housing, crime, yes. immigration, fixing the NHS, oh, yeah. and so on, education. Oh, I see Starmer was going to fix the NHS the other day. Yeah, he didn't yeah. say how. So, so they're all going to wave this magic wand <laughs> yeah, yeah. based on a headline and a pledge and a promise. Mm. Um, and we've seen this so many yeah. times over the years. So what I want to happen is that when a politician makes a pledge, when they get into office, they have to actually go through with it. Yeah. And if not, there's a penalty. There's What's a sanction. What's the penalty? Probably, I don't know, same place as the lane. Not hobbies. prison. Prison. They said, prison. Our prisons build are more prisons. Yeah. We have to build more prisons well, at your rate. You just open up some of the buildings that we've now got, like the Tower of London. There's plenty of jails in, in there. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, we're all like, it's all over. It's done. <gasps> um, Lizzie Cundy's the winner, obviously. Um, if she's very nice to you, though, she might give you a job in the uh, Department of Transport. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can, I'll be you can start, cha start, changing, yes. start changing a few things. So, well done, Lizzie. I'm Thank sure you. you'll be a, a very good Prime Minister for a week. Thank you. Uh, that was Prime Minister for a week. We've got more coming up after this. We've just about finished with COP28. This was the latest get-together uh, by about 90,000 people in the middle of the desert, uh, in the middle of the oil-rich kingdom, by the way, of the United Arab Emirates. But I was willing to give the COP28 people a bit of a break because the guy in charge this time around uh, was the ruler of Dubai, a guy by the name of Sultan El Jabbar. And he came out at the beginning and said, there's no such thing as climate change. There's no science linking fossil fuels to climate change. And everybody went nuts and went, what the hell is this guy talking about? Surely that's an off message. But right at the end, he went all the other way. And he went, oh yeah, we've got to end fossil fuels in order to save the planet. Unbelievable. So I'm not going to be sorry after all. That's it for The World According to Mike Graham for this week. But we'll be back next week with a special edition. It's going to be The Year According to Mike Graham. You don't want to miss that. <laughs>